Hello, brothers and sisters in Hartwell's family. I was speaking to my mother two days ago. My heart sunk after getting off the phone with her. I looked it up and saw the news headline of a shooting in Yolvadi, Texas. That 21 had died. My heart just became so heavy as I was before Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. I just began to pray. As I was praying, I saw a vision and began to experience the tragic scene that took place. It was as if I was looking from the eyes of the gunman. I saw children in the courtyard running in chaos as the shooting was going on. I saw one little girl by the age of seven get hit in the head immediately and fall. Then I felt in my heart the trauma of all the other children who witnessed that, the terror and fear. I just began to pray more fervently. Then I felt the pain and loss of those who lost their siblings, those who lost their younger or older brother and sister that day. I then began to carry the burden of the 18-year-old and his family and the shame that they now will carry for a long time. The disgust many people will carry towards them and his family as if they did the shooting. I began to ask the Lord for mercy for his family. And then I saw Papa God with his head down, holding his heart, holding his heart in so much sadness and pain. As I felt, I heard him say, this is just one of the many. I began to cry, hugging Papa God, putting my hands on his heart, crying, asking for mercy. I then sensed 21 crowns were given that day. Although all the children are with him now in heaven, the ripple of the aftermath of this evil is tremendous. I cry pleading with Papa to please turn this evil around for good. Turn it around for good. And he heard me. I know he will. Despite how horrific and devastating the situation is, darkness and crime will only increase, for this is the hour, as the Lord has warned us in Matthew 24. When you see all of these things happen, look up because your redemption is drawing nigh, Luke 21, 28. The darkness of our world sure remind us, this is not our home, and this is not the end, and that God is in control, and we can trust his words, as he says in Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good, to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Father, we pray right now for the families of the children and the teachers as we stand on your word that you bring peace that passes understanding. We pray for the shooter and we ask that you have mercy upon her soul. We pray for all the families affected, traumatized, and hurting over what happened. Lord, you are the healer to the brokenhearted. Bring comfort and understanding and forgiveness. We pray for hope to be given to the hopeless, courage to be given to the distraught, and strength for those who are in despair. We know you're in control, Father, and we thank you for turning this evil for their good, for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lord, you allowed yourself to be crucified because of the hope that brought you joy of having us all in heaven for eternity. Please help us to keep our eyes on you and your reward, a place you have prepared just for us. Amen. So we began, um, the Lord was, with a little conversation, a little exchange, um, 
one of the members of the community came to me with a concern and I really needed to pay attention to it. And <laughs> the Lord addressed that immediately. He said, I sent you my angel to remind you that I am taking care of you. <laughs> the Lord continued, Do only the things that I ask or approve of, and you will stay in my will. And yes, you are truly a Jewish mother. <laughs> Just moderate everything, seeking my permission. Jesus, will you please solve the number five mystery? And I heard, when you seek me with all your heart, yes, I will. Oh, boy. So I said, okay, I get it. And he quipped, thank God. <laughs> And I said, thank you, Lord. He was smiling. So moving on, he said, what is coming is a time of unsurpassed travail. This goes for everyone, not just you and the community. This is the time I spoke of in Matthew 24. And all would be well advised to prepare your hearts to cleave to me no matter what. Understand I am in control of asteroids plasma, and all forms of energy waves. Nothing can occur without my consent. And I am still dealing with a people sound asleep in their comforts. There has to be some shock value to jar them out of their decades-long complacency. Even those who know what is written about for this time, even they are still focused on their comforts and making money and living the good life. There is only one thing that is good, and that is your relationship with me. All the rest is a mirage. And to break this perception, I must take extraordinary steps. Lord, I know they want to hear more good things than bad. Could we be a little more positive? <laughs> Boy. The temerity of that woman asking <laughs> to be more positive. He said, I wish I could oblige you, but I must speak the truth and prepare everyone so that when these things do happen, you will know I already told you about them and that indeed I am in control. My people play dwelling music and come dance with me. I long to give you relief from this dying world, but you must make the space in your lives for me to spend substantial amounts of time with you. Give me the time, and I will give you the peace. Do not wait until things start happening. Rather, come to me before they do, and allow me to prepare a place of faith in your hearts that will withstand any onslaught. I need you to be prepared because I need you to minister faith and love to others in the midst of tragedy, as well as chaotic and insecure times. People are going to be very ripe for conversion, although you will also encounter those who are bitter and combative. Leave them alone and pray for them. Concentrate on those who hunger for truth and are not trying to protect their rights to sin or contradict scripture or the fact that I am real, alive, and the creator of all things. And without my permission, nothing happens. There is a reason for everything, even taking children to heaven to avoid having them suffer through this or grow up and commit mortal sins, ending in hell. I am especially concerned for the children. I know who will be able to keep their souls and who will not. Remember, beloved ones, I am all about salvation and bringing souls into eternal life with me. Try to take comfort in the fact that if I take a child, it will ultimately be for their own good. Let me come to you and hold you, 
healing your loss with my profound love and compassion. Please remember, I hate death and I weep with you. But I also promise you that someday soon you will see them again, whole and happy, playing in the wonders of heaven, riding dinosaurs and playing with polar bears and flying through the forest on vines. There is a world of wonders in heaven, and all memories of pain and suffering are automatically erased, and those who are brought here, most especially children, they come first because of their purity and innocence. Why am I speaking on heaven? Because I want all of my children around the world to know that life on earth is only temporary, but I have prepared a place for them that is literally out of this world and miraculously joyful and fun. You have this hope, and if you allow it to, it will strengthen you to keep fighting for what is right. Keep believing in my goodness and love. It is real and so very concerned with every little aspect of your life. Do you love the color orange? Well, I will adorn your place in heaven with orange flowers of every hue and orange butterflies to go with them. And even orange birds will roost outside your window. I know about your intimate likes and dislikes, and it delights me to fulfill those preferences in heaven. Do you prefer to live near the water? Then your house will be on the shore of a heavenly lake. Do you prefer the mountains? Then your house will be deep in the most beautiful forest, trees of your favorite kind, and even those laden with fruit. Do you see? I live to bring you joy, and everything you've ever loved will be in the place I am preparing for you, in heaven, for eternity. So please, come to me and allow me to heal the wounds of your heart and give you beauty and joy for your ashes. Come to me. I will comfort and restore you, and you will see your loved one again.